Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Subhash Gangadharan. I'm a derivative analyst at HDFC Securities. Uh, myself and my colleague uh, Ajit Naik, who is also a derivative analyst uh, HDFC Securities, will be presenting the webinar today on decoding derivatives advanced. Uh, we will be talking about the various uh, derivative indicators like open interest, volumes, uh, rollover, and volatility. And we'll also be looking at a few derivative strategies like bull spread, bear spread, and also a couple of hedging strategies. So let's start with uh, open interest versus volume. So what is open interest? It indicates the number of outstanding positions in the market, whereas volume indicates the number of contracts that have been bought and sold. An important difference between open interest and volumes is that uh, the open interest can increase or decrease during the day depending on whether the traders are building fresh positions or unwinding their existing positions. So if traders are unwinding their positions, then the open interest will automatically decrease. But that is not the case with volumes. Volumes will keep increasing as traders buy and sell their positions. So now, Ajit, could you please explain to us about uh, volatility? Yes, uh, as we discussed in our last session that volatility plays a very important role while uh, determining the option pricing. So here we should uh, understand a bit more about volatility. What is volatility? Uh, in the subsequent slides, we are going to discuss what is historical, uh, historical volatility and also the implied volatility. Before that, let us uh, just understand the basic version of volatility. What is volatility? Volatility is a, uh, it is a range. Uh, for a given specific period of time. It measures the magnitude and a change of price of the underlying. So why volatility is important? Uh, uh, for this, I, I want to give a simple example. For example, we have a Maruti car and we have a Swift Desire. So why is Swift Desire is priced more in the market? Because just it is just because of the speed and the horsepower it has. So uh, same way in a option market, whenever there is high volatility for any stock at any given point of time, it will be always price higher. In a subsequent slide, we are also going to show how uh, the change in a volatility will impact the option pricing. So there are two more important concepts. One is volatility and another one is the time. So a time we will refer as a comfort in a car. For example, Swift has more comfort than a Wagner car. That is all. That is also a reason why it is more price than uh, the Wagner car. So volatility and the time. These are the two most important factor. We have to look forward for to build up any strategy or to hedge or anything. These two. These two things are very important. So now uh, we have a chart where India VIX in relationship with the Nifty. What you can observe from here is like market moves higher with a low volatility and uh, there is an inverse correlation. We can see in 2017 uh, the market was trending higher and the volatility was at its low. Even now when market is at its peak, the volatility is also it's the most rock bottom uh, line that is almost it is 10 to 11. So it will always have a inverse relationship with the market. So why it is important? <clears throat> it will help us to determine uh, whether we should look for a call or whether we should look for a put. So that we will explain in detail. So uh, this is for a basic understanding how it plays. We will show uh, the live example how we can uh, use the open interest. What are open interest? We have a flagship product called uh, Pro Terminal. Last in last session. Uh, because of lack of time, we were not able to show. Now we will show how we can use all the things. Uh, it is an umbrella product where you can see all the data at one single place. You need not go for any other software. So as we discussed about the open interest and the volume, what you can do, you just have to type uh, any stock name, for example, SBIN. It is a State Bank of India. We can go for uh, December, this thing. And we'll get us uh, all inside like a snapshot. Since I think uh, market is closed, oh no, uh, we are getting the data. So here we can see the change in the open interest. Here we can see what is the discount. Here we can see the rollover. We are going to uh, uh, go in detail, uh, deep, deep dive into the rollover. But here all it is a snapshot. 
what is the open interest for the day what is the open, uh, number of share traded on that day what is the open interest change what is the premium so we can see in detail what are the open interest and for ib you you just have to go in a uh, open ch option chain and you can see the iv for different strike price there is different iv because there are uh, there is a demand and supply uh, disequilibrium and equilibrium in all the different strike prices so that, that is why uh, the iv is different at different strike price so you can see here the iv you need not go for uh, nsc website directly we, uh, this software uh, get pulls all the data from the nsc it is we can show uh, we can see live data over here So it is very user free uh, software. We can just see everything. Now Shubhash, please explain uh, our viewers what is historical, uh, historical volatility and implied volatility. Yeah, thanks Ajit. Uh, historical volatility measures the fluctuations of a security based on historical prices. So we are trying to determine how volatile the security was in the last one year. Normally, the historical volatility is given in annualized figures. It's calculated by taking the da daily percentage change in the price and then annualizing it to arrive at the annualized figures. There is a link on the NSE website, which we have given in the presentation. Uh, so you could uh, go, to, go to that link and you can get the uh, historical volatility of all the FNO stocks. Uh, now we come to implied volatility. Implied volatility is the market's perception of the volatility of the underlying security. So basically, uh, if the traders expect the wallet stock to become more volatile, then the ID normally jumps. So if you observe before major events like elections or before the quarterly results, we will always see that the IV tends to rise higher. Now it can be calculated by taking the market price of the option and uh, back solving it using the black scholes formula to arrive at the IV. When the IV is uh, greater than the HV, it means that the options are overpriced. So this information can be helpful to decide whether to go for a buying strategy or a selling strategy. If options are overpriced, it is better to sell the options. And if the options are underpriced, it's better to buy an option. So we have looked at an, at an example here. Uh, we have not uh, changed any other factor. We have only changed the IV. And as you can see, the uh, Nifty is currently at 11,576 and the strike price is 11,600 with IV of 8.28. .8. If we increase the IV to 10, then the option price jumps from 8.28, uh, it jumps to 10. So there is an increase from 8.28 .8 to 10 rupees. And that happened only because the IV increased. Now, now Ajit, could you show us more about the IV on the pro terminal? Yeah, whatever we have discussed so far, like uh, how does the uh, IV change the op uh, option pricing? We will see with the help of our pro terminal. Yeah, so just log into pro terminal. Under market, you have an option calculator. Click it. Here you can see the theoretical price of an uh, of any options. So let us take an example of Nifty. We'll see the strike in the money twelve thousand two hundred. So it will be better. So the spot price is 12,271, implied volatility is 10.26 and interest risk-free interest rate is 10%. So risk-free interest rate does not impact that much on the option because the higher the inter, uh, interest rate, the pricing will be slightly uh, higher. It only means that uh, 
because it is a leveraged product uh, we have some uh, like for example if you are going to buy 5 lakh amount of sbi instead we are going to use only 1 lakh rupees uh, for fno so rest of the amount we can uh, the idle money we can put in the bank and get the uh, risk free return so that is why it is slightly higher so it will not impact that much but the implied volatility will definitely play a important role we will see with this example so if i'll submit so the theoretical option price is 24.66 so now just make a slight difference in the uh, implied volatility we we will assume because of certain event it will just jump to 12% so now from 22 it has raised to 33 it is almost a 10 20% rise or oh, single 2% raise in the implied volatility if it will decrease to 8 suppose like we are just reducing it to 8 now it is 33.16 please observe the change in the price so it is 14 so what does it mean even if we think that market is bullish and it will go to uh, say 12000 to uh, 500 or 600 and if and if the implied volatility is not increasing so then the option price will definitely not increase to that extent so we have to keep in mind whenever we buy a put or a call that uh, at that time the volatility should be very low so that when there is a jump in the volatility even if you do not achieve your target price in the underlying price because of the volatility you will make money in the call or put option so it is very this uh, the concept of volatility is very important while designing any kind of strategies or even buying naked call or put so we will see what are the different strategies uh, we can use uh, with the help of the uh, derivative product it is very easy to understand there is no rocket science in this we have to just use it at a appropriate time timing is very important in the market so we have to use at very accurately we have to see where uh, when the volatility is low and when the volatility is high and what is our view on the market so subhash uh, uh, let us explain what is rollover yeah rollover is an indicator of the trader's willingness to carry forward a position to the next series so many times uh, traders may want to take a longer term view on a particular stock so in this case suppose now we are in december and the december series is expiring so the traders they want to carry forward their position so they will square off their december position and build a fresh position in january and similarly at the end of the january series they may again square up the uh, january position and uh, uh, build a fresh position in the february series thereby continuing their position so in this uh, ppt you can see we have uh, calculated the rollover figures from uh, may to june series so the rollover is calculated by adding the june and july series and dividing it by the total open interest of may june and july to arrive at uh, 69.87% which is a decent uh, rollover figure so higher the rollover then it means that uh, traders are more positive on the stock and therefore they are roll rolling over their positions to the next series now what is roll cost roll cost means at what uh, basis or percentage points uh, positions are being carried forward from the current series to the next series the higher the rollover cost the more uh, positive is the sentiment towards the stock per, especially if the stock has been moving positively if the stock has been moving negatively then it suggests that uh, there could be more weakness in the stock if there is a if the rollover cost is lower and the price action has been positive it suggests that the uptrend could be tiring and there could be a reversal soon similarly if the rollover cost is uh, going down and there is negative price action it could mean that the stock could soon bottom out and there could be a reversal in the trend so ajit could you please uh, show the rollover data on the pro terminal yes roll over the calculation of the roll over it looks it sounds bit difficult but we know that today is a era of technology 
and uh, when the technology we should take the advantage of it and that is incorporated in our uh, pro terminal so we will show how to analyze the stocks just with a one click in our pro terminal we can do it very easily so markets we have to go to future rollover that's it and now you can see spot price rollover price and a three month rollover cost of carry cost of carry of uh, previous uh, rollover and price change since expiry so this is more important uh, many a times trader ask you whether we should roll over this position sell position or buy position we should always understand we we are very small percentage in terms of a trading area so there are huge institutional and other uh, smart traders so roll over if the roll over change in the roll over price from the expiry is more means there is if there is positive roll over is going on we cannot carry our short position so we can just understand with the help of this uh, uh, which position we should carry if the whole mass is in a bullish we can just uh, carry our uh, bullish position if we cannot go against the main market direction that's what i uh, want to conclude so here what we can do is like we just click this is since expired it is minus 27.33 so here s bank and cost of carry is also less since price is rising and cost of carry is less, there is possibility of uh, squaring off the existing position so likewise we can go and see uh, indigo so here the uh, cost of uh, the roll uh, rollover percentage uh, price change since expiry is less so it means it uh, there is a bearish rollover in this market so just click it sort it and accordingly we can understand see nmdc is 18.53 price change is also increasing so there is high probability that there is a bullish rollover happening in nmdc stock and if you look at the chart is also showing a bullish uh, kind of uh, trend in the market so we can help a chart uh, and we can use this rollover uh, data and we can gauge like where it will head it is only a game of probability we can't be always right but we have to be always at the highest probable trade we are looking for highest probable trade so this data will help us to bring to a highest probable trade now let us dig dive into different strategies derivative strategies uh, with the help of different data so far we have learned that uh, these different type of data we can just see what kind of strat simple strategies we can make and we can make some money out of it yes sir let us uh, see about this single stock option uh, uh, strategy yeah sure hedging strategy is yeah, a hedging thanks. strategy right Yeah, a trader may want to hedge a single stock position if he is having a long term view on the stock, but in the short term he expects a minor correction. So in order to avoid a capital loss in the short term, he can choose to hedge his long position. Now he can hedge the long position by going short in the futures market. So as we have shown in the in our presentation, he has bought 500 shares of TCS at 2070. and the current market price is uh, now 2000 in that case he would make a loss in the in the spot market of 70 rupees but he has shorted uh, in the futures market at 2075 and as the price comes down he makes a profit of 75 rupees so that way the loss in the in the cash market is offset by the profit in the futures market so his net profit and loss is only 5 similarly if the price goes up to 2100 he makes a profit of only 30 rupees in the spot market but he makes a loss of uh, 25 rupees in the futures market so again his net profit and loss is only 5 if the price goes up further to 2200 he he makes a profit of 130 rupees but he makes a loss of 125 rupees in the futures market so again his net profit is only 5 so that way he is uh, protecting his profits but the disadvantage of this is that if the stock price goes up then he is uh, is not getting the advantage of the profit because uh, he makes losses in the futures position but that's he has to give up that profit if he wants to control his risk so that is the only disadvantage now ajit uh, could you explain to us about uh, a put hedge how we can hedge using put options Yeah, definitely. But uh, one more thing I would like to add uh, in the stock hedging strategy using futures is it is a delta neutral strategy because 
the, the delta of the stock and the delta of the market is always one when you use the futures the, the delta becomes one so uh, the difference between uh, like you should have the equal amount of quantity well, uh, like if the lot size is 500 you should also have a 500 otherwise it will be over hedge or sometimes under hedge so because we have to little bit take a consideration of delta so next we are going uh, to see uh, a protective put a protective put is like similarly as we are using futures instead of futures we are using put in, uh, we are using put to hedge our portfolio let us see how we can do that yeah so protective put is a strategy uh, is employed by a trader when they are bullish on their stock but they want to hedge because of some a certain uncertain uh, news in the market. Uh, it could be any uh, like any guidance. So is, is there any guidance? We have to see if, if uh, there is a guidance and if we think the guidance could be negative. So we have to put our stop because we feel in a long term it may give return. But for a shorter duration, volatility is for a shorter duration. And to protect that shorter uh, decline in the market, shorter, short time correction in the market, we are going to buy a put. So how it will help the traders? Yeah, so here we have taken an example. Uh, so for example, an investor purchases 100 shares of ABC at uh, 100 rupees. And if the price increased to 108, definitely is making a profit of 8%. There is no doubt about it. But you do not want to sell. Now he want to protect because he feels that it can further go and test 120, 150 odd levels. So he just want to protect because he assumes that there could be some uh, announcement from the company and to protect that he want to buy a put instead of futures. Here we are buying a put. So what we are doing is we are buying a put and uh, there are uh, we are buying a put of 100 rupees at 3.25. Yes, we can see it over here at 3.25. So how will uh, so we have to understand what will be the payoff at different prices. So he has bought at 100 and the cost is 3.25. So if the stock goes down by one rupee, say 99, so he will make a loss of one rupee of uh, whatever the stock he holds and he will gain something in put. That is, uh, it will uh, so he will uh, the put the put price will increase. So similarly, if it reaches to 80, he will make, uh, make a loss of 20 rupees, but he will make profit in the put. So net, his net loss is only the premium paid. Is uh -huh. it, it is only cap up to the premium paid. So if it goes up, so he will make a profit of 4.5 and it is at 8 because he, uh, there is a cost of 3.25. Additional cost will happen when he buys a put. That's it. It is very simple. Additional cost will happen whenever he buys the put. So uh, Subhash, now it is hedging. Now we will show how we can do a spread spread betting. Yeah, yeah a bull call spread is can be used if a trader is uh, moderately bullish on a stock. He can buy a call of a lower strike and sell a call of a higher strike. So as you can see in the chart in the PPT, uh, the profits are limited and the losses are also limited in this strategy. So let us look at an example. ABC futures is currently trading at uh, 500 rupees. So one, if the trader is uh, moderately bullish, he can buy a 510 call at uh, 10 rupees premium and sell a 520 call at 7 rupees. So his net cost is now 3. And that is the maximum loss he can make in this strategy. And once the price starts moving up, he starts making money. His break-even point is uh, 510 plus the three rupees of the net premium outflow, which is 513. So once the price crosses 513, he starts making money. But the profits are limited to 520. If the prices uh, go beyond 520, he will not earn more money because he has sold an option and the, and the option which he has sold will start incurring losses and which will offset the profits which he made, which he makes on the buying position. So his pro maximum profit is limited to 520 in the spot market. So Ajit, could you give us an example of the bear put spread? Yes. Uh, before going into the spread strategy, I would like to also add certain important points. Like when we buy a stock, our view 
is always bullish in the market and when we sell a future our view is bearish but when we do uh, when we opt for options it against further divides it can be bullish or it can be mildly bullish or it can be highly bullish similarly bearish mildly bearish or highly bearish so we have to first understand what is our view and then initiate a strategy if you are highly bullish then this definitely will not give a good payoff because you are highly bullish and you are protecting your you are capping your limit so this strategy is used only when you know that this stock will move 2 to 3% or 4% whatever the uh, resistance level till whatever the resistance level it will travel you should you should have a, a little control over the market like it can go up till this level if you are thorough about that level yeah if there is only 10 days for expiry and it cannot for example sbi cannot cross 350 level in next uh, in next 4 to 5 days we can use this kind of strategy and why we are selling the call uh, very why we are selling the higher strike price it is only re to reduce the burden of the call which we have purchased we have to think from a logical angle it is just reducing the call Uh, we have uh, we have bought a call option at say 10 and we are selling the higher strike price because we know we are assuming that it won't cross 350 level so to reduce the cost we are just selling the higher strike price call option so in the, uh, in this way we are just reducing our cost so similarly if i am mildly bearish in the market i will definitely go for this strategy i will also look at what is the volatility if the volatility has drastically raised then this kind of strategy will not help because Uh, if there is no if there is movement in the price and if volatility drops then there is a problem so we have to see that market is consolidating and after that there is a range breakdown or a breakout for a bullish strategy breakdown for a bearish strategy that time we can see the increase in the volatility and we know that the expiry is very near and it will not cross uh, 250 level in case of sbi or 310 level in case of sbi then we can use this strategy okay so let us take an example how we can make a profit from this strategy so abc future trading at uh, cmp 500 loss size is 1000 abc future we our view already is, we, we have discussed what should be our view before initiating this strategy so what we are doing is buying 510 put at 10 rupees and selling one lot 500 put at a premium of 7 see here what we are doing we are just giving only 3 rupees for that instead of giving 10 rupees we are just giving 3 rupees so net premium is 3 rupees so max loss is the premium 3 3 3 uh, rupees into the 1000 the lot size that is the our max loss because if we uh, buy only put then our max loss is 10000 to reduce the cost we are just uh, selling the uh, one more lower strike price put so now it is from 10000 it has moved to 3000 so so what will be the max profit 7000 because we have cap our limit we know that it is difficult for the market to go down below certain point so we know and we are taking the advantage of it so max cap is 7000 rupees so what will be the break even break even with the 510 the higher strike price minus the net premium paid that is 507 so anything above anything below 507 will be a profit and if it goes what if it goes below 5000 our max profit will be cap that is 7000 let it go to 480 400 anything we are happy with our profit the 7000 profit we are predetermined and we are safe we are going to book our profit that's it so what to do and what to not to do so please explain to our viewers yeah, yeah there are certain do's and don'ts uh, when you are trading in the derivative markets the most important thing is you must be thorough of your concept so whether you are buying uh, a support or selling from a resistance or you are Uh, if you are a bullish on the market then you should be buying calls so you should be thorough of your concept and another thing is you should also identify a risk reward ratio when you are entering a trade at least look for a risk reward ratio of 2 is to 1 which means that your reward should be at least two times your risk and more importantly take an appropriate exposure it is recommended to at least uh, diversify into three positions if not 5 or 7 but minimum is 3 to hedge your risk and what not to do do not take uh, anonymous tips from uh, from unknown people it's very important that you do your own research or rely on people you can trust do not take high risk with limited reward as i mentioned earlier 
enter into a trade only if the risk reward ratio is one is to two and do not take more exposure if you are not able to pay the mark to market margins in futures you have to pay a mark to market margin so so be aware of that and take uh, positions accordingly mid caps and small caps uh, cannot be hedged due to their highly volatile nature and portfolio beta ratio which keeps changing so be aware of that fact and uh, control your risk accordingly yeah appropriately so whatever strategies we have discussed uh, in our pro terminal that is an uh, artificial intelligence which according to our risk appetite will show what is the best strategy for the market so it will uh, it will help us to take a decision because now the, we can use the use of technology so what we can do is in a pro terminal markets here strategies so first let us decide the target date so target it would be 26 this expiry so what is the target price i feel 12900 this is just for an example i am not recommending anything over here it's 12900 so we have to prioritize our risk appetite so one uh, it depends on uh, traders to traders so i want maximum pot, uh, profit potential i'll put it here then i will go for maximum return then maximum chance of probability then minimize the profit potential uh, maximize the profit potential should be here and we are trading so loss is in a hand so for me it is very like it comes last so now let's check check for the strategies so what you can see over here it is a projection where the price can go depending on the iv so if the 11.37 iv is going to continue so what are the different uh, ltp like uh, price the market can travel on different dates you can see over here upside as well as on the lower side if according to my risk profile if there is any strategy it will throw the different strategy if it is not there then it will not throw. yes there is there are strategies so these are there are other strategies we have not yet discussed uh, it is showing long straddle there are different strategies we have shown only two strategies so you can use this also so uh, now it is telling this is not a good time because uh, according to the risk profile to use the bull spread or bear spread so there it is a good time for this strategy so if whenever you see this kind of strategy you can use you can understand read the strategy you will know the what is the break even what is the highest profit potential lowest profit potential then you can implement it so it is a very uh, user friendly software yes now we can uh, go for q and a we are yeah. open for q and a if you have any questions please uh, send us protective put strategy so protective put strategy means you are holding a stock suppose you are holding sbi or you are holding dlf so you you know that it will go up till 350 370 380 but because of certain event is there rbi is coming up with policy anything like that and you want to protect the uncertainty in the market for a shorter time for this expiry because it every option has its own expiry every option has a certain period of time so within this expiry if you feel it can go down but for a long time it will come up you have to protect your uh, stock so to protect the stock we are buying a put just to hedge instead of selling the future in the market, future future contract we are buying put option that's it i hope you have clear i have cleared your doubt sir uh, heat map is for a group of stocks so your question is does pro terminal show heat map for each strike price for option we have a option chain can we go for to pro terminal
here you you just need to type say dlf dlf and gen in here option chain so here you can see everything so it is kind of a heat, heat map for that particular stock you cannot get a heat map for all the stock at a uh, in a single page it is little difficult so here we have an option to look into a particular stock i hope i have uh, cleared your query this is just an example there are methods of calculation of iv so a pro terminal i think it is fair enough to say that it throws the valid information so you can uh, rely on pro terminal for iv or there are other uh, pro if the, i have to recommend other product there is something called my fn my fn that is reliable but we have uh, cross check certain numbers and we did not find any discrepancies in the numbers so you can rely on this is pro terminal free ha huh. higher what does higher iv and lower iv implicate on otm and itm put so whenever there is high uh, the iv is higher than the normal iv of the index you can, we can just assume there is lot more buying happening in that stock because of the more buyers the iv raises more buying means iv will definitely raise yeah iv is calculated using the black scholes formula you can do a search on google and yeah. uh, you can get the black scholes formula but you don't need to memorize the formula nowadays uh, everything is automated so you just have to use a, a computer which has the calculation which can show you the calculation and you just have to give your inputs and it will automatically calculate the the iv yeah uh, we are going to give the uh, copy of this on our youtube channel and uh, yeah we are thinking of making a more uh, strategies and will come come up in uh, coming webinars in range bond if you are sure about the range bond market then you can sell call and sell put that is called a short strand short, yeah short strand yeah you can uh, if you have a demat account you can have access to pro terminal you have to just subscribe to it yeah uh, we can take that question does pro terminal shows which strike price is best to buy uh, call or put it will show the strategies which strategies it is uh, good for the said market condition spread strategies yeah basically a spread strategy is if you are mildly bullish or bearish on a stock if you are mildly bullish you buy a call with a lower strike and you sell a call with a higher strike 
So by selling the call option, you earn a premium and your cost is lowered. Yes. Uh, so Shubhas, uh, we are going to conclude this uh, webinar and we'll come up with certain different yeah. strategies and will help our uh, traders. Yeah, we will definitely come up again in the future, in the near future with more strategies to help you trade profitably. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend and goodbye. <laughs>